They say everyone has a book inside them, and often that's where it should stay. I really can't help but be aghast that the author wants you to pay. But we're just a pair of absolute bookends who don't want to be like us. So if you want to read, pick some quality literature rather than this dross. Welcome to Two Absolute Bookends, where we read books so bad you should burn them before reading. This is episode 11, whose, due to format changes, name is going to be known pending, but let's see. And this week, joining me in kissing the fleeting stead of death is Louis. Hello. And this week, now we're really mixing things up, and we are reading The Eye of Argon by Jim Tace. Um, I'd... I would say support the author, but he's now been dead for a little while, <laughs> and nobody ever made any money out of this book anyway, so there's no one to support, but you should definitely read it either way. Yeah, it's, as I understand, it's quite a well-known short story Yeah, for being uh, horrifically bad. Yeah, it's, it's lauded uh, in infamy as being one of the worst pieces of fantasy literature of all time. No, it's only a, a short novelette if you will. But it was written by a 16-year-old Jim Tace in 1970, which he sent to a local sci-fi magazine to get published. And get published it did, and ever since then it's done the rounds at conventions everywhere where people try to get to the end reading it without laughing, basically. Jim Tace, he seems to have gotten used to this infamy in the fullness of time, like... You know, he, he was quite willing to hold up his hands to writing it and that it that it had its problems. You know, he defended the fact that, you know, not many people had any full stories written and published when they're 16, but he admits it wasn't good. You know, he, he knows what he did. <laughs> and he knew how to be a good sport of it, but he did point out that it's a zero-sum game not being a good sport about something like this. You'll just get the piss taken out of you more if you try and defend a piece of literature like this. Yeah, it's nice when people, like, I don't know, own their failures. You yeah. Know, I... Like, you know, to the uh, the room, Tommy Wiseau, you know, he made a huge, you know, killing out of it by touring it. And, you know, I, I still no. feel like th with him, there's a bit of a weirdness where I'm not quite sure if he realises it's terrible. I think he knows that people think it's terrible, but I still think that he just thinks that everyone's a little misguided about it. He's just like... the. Uh, you just don't get my genius, Danny. Uh, I don't know who that is. I was. like that, yeah. <laughs> who are you doing there? <laughs> uh, I I was doing Lisa from The Room. Yeah, nice. But yeah, there there was actually, a, there has apparently been people that have questioned whether Jim Thetis actually wrote the book. There's some people that think it's too perfectly bad. Some people think that it's like a satire and that it was either intentionally written that that badly, either by by a Jim or by someone else and like put it out there under a pseudonym. I mean, there doesn't seem to be much actual proof that from that other than a couple of people that have like claimed it with no real evidence. And it seems to be like, you know, I mean this guy was like accepting it up until his death that he was the one that wrote it and you know, everyone involved in the original publishing was like, yeah, we just got sent this. So I think that's just people overthinking how bad people can be at writing mm -hmm. <laughs> when they're like 16. <laughs> but yeah, like I say, uh, Jim Tess died sadly in 2002, aged 49. I mean, don't know why. I actually looked. Nobody seems to know on the internet how he actually died. So maybe he was a made up person. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe that's the proof. Oh, like, there's like quite a morbid part on his Wikipedia discussion page. Where it was like, does anyone know how this guy died? <laughs> Could someone please tell me? The page feels incomplete. <laughs> and I mean, I kind of agree, because that's why I was looking at the discussion page. <laughs> but yeah. Who looks at... Sorry, who looks at the Wikipedia discussion page? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just trying my hardest to find out how he died. It was the last place left. <laughs> You run out of articles about on who this guy is after, like, the first page of Google. <laughs> There's not much on him as a person other than the Eye of Argon. <laughs> Apparently he likes collecting German swords. That Which... made it onto the Wikipedia page, but not how he died. <laughs> I think you two would have got on. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we would have had a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that covers all the history you need to know about the book to give you some context. I mean, like, I've pretty much summarised everything important on the Wikipedia page as it is, but there's more there and not much anywhere else about the man, if you want to learn more about him. <laughs> yeah, and for anyone uh, dying to know what happens in the, you know, remaining chapters of The Way the Stars Fall, don't worry, we'll, we will be returning to it. Um this is just going to be a brief uh, interlude at the third way point of the way the stars fall. So, yeah, know. we just we decided that you know it'd be a good a good thing to be doing going forward in any long books you do. You know, to split up things so you're not reading like thirty, forty chapters of the same thing. Just every I don't know we'll probably decide on a book by book basis, but at just certain intervals through, just take a little break to read something short, and it's just a bit of fun like this. I suppose that's you up to date on all the housekeeping, and we may as well begin. Uh, this is going to be quite different from well, it's going to be different from our normal coverage anyway, because like I say, this thing is. There's no copyright covering this, you know. No one, they're like, it's popularised by being read aloud on the internet and elsewhere. So we're going to try something a bit different, and we're going to be doing sort of like a reading through the book. We'll be taking, like, we'll like, we'll, we'll stop, we'll take breaks if something ridiculously funny or stupid comes up and have a bit of a chat about it. Which, by the sounds of it, it will, yeah. It will, believe me. <laughs> I mean, I, I read, like, a chapter summary by accident while I was looking at the Wikipedia page, and I, like, nearly died from laughter just reading it being summarised, let alone how this guy who... There's there's an amazing quote about Jim Teus that I think I have to... <laughs> that I have to put out there. <laughs> there, uh, one moment. It's like... He was described in a sci-fi magazine as a malaprop genius, a McGonagall of prose with an eerie gift for choosing the wrong word and then misapplying it. <laughs> Which Perfect. is just... I, I am looking forward to this a great deal. <laughs> but yeah, so we're going to be... We'll be picking him up on his shit as we go through the chapter reading it aloud because, hell, it seems that reading it aloud's basically a party game anyway so why not get in on that but once we're done with each chapter we will take some time out at the end and just discuss what happened and any feelings that you know we we want to chat about but didn't seem worth bringing up sort of like in situ to ruin what flow if there is any <laughs> of the right of the writing so with all of that out of the way i suppose it's time to get into the eye of argon by jim tace I'm going to be reading this chapter, because it's not too long, but I will be mixing things up as we go along. There's no chapter title, is there? No, no chapter titles. Nice. I, I miss them. <laughs> but yes, so, The Eye of Argon by Jim Tace. The weather-beaten trail wound ahead into, <laughs> into the dust-wracked climbs of the barren land which dominates large portions of the Nogolian Empire. Age-worn hoofprints smothered by the sifting sands of time shone dully against the dust-splattered crust of earth. The tireless sun cast its parching rays of incandescence from overhead. Halfway through its daily revol rev revolution... That one's actually right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Small rodents scampered about, occupying themselves in the daily accomplishments of their dismal lives... Dust sprayed over three heaving mounts in blinding clouds while they bore their burdensome cargoes of their struggling overseers. Okay. Prepare to embrace your creators in the Stygian haunts of hell, barbarian, gasped the first soldier. Only after you have kissed the fleeting stead of death, wretch, returned Grigner, who, may I add, is our hero of the peace, Grigner the Barbarian who has a fight against vowels as well as many other things. Just slipped in that one eye to stop it being a total word salad. A sweeping blade of flashing steel riveted from the massive barbarian's hide enameled shield as his rippling right arm thrust forth, <laughs> <laughs> sending a steel-shod blade to the hilt into the soldier's vital organs. 
The disemboweled mercenary crumpled from his saddle and sank to the clouded sward, sprinkling the parched dust with crimson droplets of escaping life fluid. What? <laughs> Problem? Um, what's a sward? I don't know. <laughs> Shall I look it up? Heard... Yeah, I've heard that word before. Sward is an, an actual An expanse thing. of short grass. Yeah, that that works. <laughs> I don't know what a clouded sward is, but he could fall to the sward. I don't know if anyone's ever written that sentence before, but no. I, it's not strictly wrong, I suppose. <laughs> Escaping life fluid is a great way of describing blood. <laughs> yep, I, I like that. <laughs> I like this. The infused barbarian swilveled about, his shock of fiery red hair tossing robustly in the humid air currents <laughs> as he faced the attack of the defeated soldier's fellow in arms. <laughs> Damn you, barbarian, shrieked the soldier as he observed his comrade in death. <laughs> observed him? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why I like observed his comrade in death so much. There's <laughs> just, I think it's just the, like the counterpoint between how how calm and collected observed is. Like he's sitting there, sort of like leaning on his sword, like nodding, just like hmm, yes, yes. Yet he's shrieking, <laughs> shrieking, "Damn you, barbarian!" <laughs> Uh, uh, anyway, a gleaming scimitar smote a heavy blow against the renegade's spiked helmet, bringing a heavy cloak over the accordion's misting brain. Shaking off the effects of the pounding blow to his head, Grigner brought down his scarlet-streaked edge against the soldier's crudely forged hauberk, clanging harmlessly to the left side of his opponent. The soldier's stead winnied as he directed the horse back from the driving blade of the barbarian. Grigner leash, Grigner leashed, yeah, Grigner leashed, 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 yeah. Grigner leashed his mount forward as the hoarsely piercing battle cry of his wilderness-bred race resounded from his grinding lungs. <laughs> 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 now that's a sentence. <laughs> Grinding lungs. <laughs> what, what, what on earth does that mean? <laughs> what on earth are grinding lungs? <laughs> it, that's just that's that's just such a tortured sentence as well. The hoarsely piercing battle cry of his wilderness bred race. Anyway, keep it together. A twirling blade bounced harmlessly from the mighty thief's buckler. <laughs> as his rolling right arm cleft upward, sending a foot of blinding steel rippling through the Cimmarian's exposed gullet. A gasping gurgle from the soldier's writhing mouth as he tumbled to the golden sand at his feet, and wormed agonisingly in his deathbed. Grigner's emerald green orbs glared lustfully at the wallowing soldier's struggling before his chestnut swirled mounts. <laughs> His scowling voice reverberated over the dying form in a tone of mocking mirth. You city-bred dog should learn not to antagonise your better. Reining his weary mount ahead, Grigner, uncapitalised, resumed his journey to the Norigolian city of Gorzam, hoping to discover wine, women and adventure to boil the wild blood coursing through his savage veins. The trek to Gorzom was forced upon Grigner when the soldiers of Kryn were leashed upon him. Yeah, were leashed upon him by a faithless concubine he had wooed. His scandalous activities throughout the Cimmerian city had unleashed throngs of havoc and uproar among its refined patricians, leading them to tack a heavy reward over his head. He had barely managed to escape through the back entrance of the inn he had been guzzling in, as a squad of soldiers... Pounced upon him. Yep. 
After spilling a spout of blood from the leader of the mercenaries as he dismembered one of the officer's arms, he retreated to his mount to make his way towards Gorzom, rumoured to contain hordes of plunder and many young wenches for any man who has the backbone to wrest them away. Chapter one, end scene. <laughs> yep. I mean, what? What just happened? <laughs> I, yeah, I feel... I feel a little giddy. <laughs> I feel like we were dropped quite quickly into something there. Yeah, that was very much in media res just there. We were right in the thick of the action from the get-go. <laughs> My word. So, so let's see if we can piece together what happened in like plain English. So, mm-hmm. so there's this guy, Gring, Gringner, Gringner, Gringner. I think Grigner. 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 That, that's how I like to pronounce it anyway. So Grigner is some guy. A barbarian. Some barbarian who was killing some soldiers. Yep, that's that seems to be what he was getting about. That was that took up the majority of the chapter just describing in minute detail how Grigner killed these fools. Do we know why? Now, I think that, that we get explained that at the end, because that was sort of going really, back. He's yeah. he's saying he's he's going to... He's it's like just... on the way towards Gorzam now. Yeah, when the soldiers of Kryn were leashed upon him by a concubine he had wooed. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm guessing these soldiers found him on his way to yeah. Gorzom? These were soldiers of Kryn who were hunting him down on his way to Gorzom. Nice. And... Uh... <laughs> The reason he's been moving to Gorzon is because he's been run out of Simarian City? Or is a Simarian City a description of a place? Uh, wait, where was this? It says that he the trek was forced upon him to Gorzon because of the uh, soldiers being leashed upon him by that concubine. Yeah. I guess Simarian are like a, I don't know, either a race or an empire or something like that. They put that. a bounty on him because he did some bad stuff. Scandalous activities. But it, but why was it a concubine that was able to send them after him, though? Like, you know, mm. concubines... I mean, I know, it, there's concubines and concubines, I suppose, you know. There's ones that are just like basic prostitutes, mm-hmm. but others that are like, but others that are like Sh- part of like... Sultan. Yeah, she might have been one of the higher up ones or something. Or yeah, so like, like she, like she might not have been able to directly go to some soldiers and go hunt this guy down, but she might have been able to be like, I was like, oh, this barbarian, he wooed me and did all this to me, and then get like whoever she's concubining to go up, send some men after him. But it might still be her fault. And then sort he, of, he went, he made it to Gorzon, right? Um, he's still on route, I believe. Uh, it says... Oh, so is that a bit about the inn? Yeah, that's, that was happening in Kryn. Yeah. yeah. And that's, so that's him leaving for Gorzron. He was in mm-hmm. an inn and then got pounced upon. Yeah, that was looking, like his last night wenches. in Kryn. <laughs> Plunder. Yeah, he, he'd, get, he'd cause too much uproar among the refined patricians. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He just... What 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 is there to say that it doesn't say for itself? <laughs> well, at least we understand what happened. Whether I we guess kn- we know why. No, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah, we sort of we sort of know what happened. It's just like this Grigner seems like a beast. He took out these three guys, no trouble. Yeah, with no remorse. Mm. City bred dog should learn not to antagonise you better. <laughs> they should, Louis. Let's be honest. Yeah. I like the, d- the dismal lives of rodents. <laughs> What's he got against rodents? <sighs> I guess we move on to chapter two. Uh, I suppose just trying to think if there's anything else to bring up about chapter one. It's just, uh, I mean, no, it was ju- it was just it was just a lot of violence, wasn't it? Let's be yeah. honest. <laughs> so. I guess chapter two. Yep. No title again. Arriving after dusk in Gorzom, Grigner descended down a dismal alley, 
reining his horse before a beaten tavern. We should have dismal watch. <laughs> what? <laughs> dismal rodents, dismal, dismal alley. alley. Yeah, <laughs> dismal horse <laughs> before a beaten tavern. The red-haired giant strode into the dimly lit hostelry, reeking of foul odours and cheap wine. The air was heavy with chocking fumes, spewing from smouldering torches, one word, encased mm -hmm. within within Thedon's earthen-packed walls. I think that's meant to be the den's earthen-packed walls. Right. One word again. Yeah, so uh, it although it could, it could be a guy called Thedon, and it just isn't capitalised. Yeah. <laughs> Tables were clustered with groups of drunken thieves and cutthroats, cutthroats, sorry, tossing dice or making love to willing prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> Is can a prostitute not be willing? Like that's part of their job, right? I mean, uh, to always be willing. You, you can still, you can still like assault a prostitute. You know, you but can... back in these days, <laughs> prostitutes have it easy now. <laughs> We probably shouldn't get into that. <laughs> I think I think discussing prostitution probably falls outside the remit of this podcast. I'd like to imagine that when it says tossing dice or making love to willing prostitutes, that it's like they're either tossing dice or making love to willing prostitutes. So <laughs> some of them are making love to them, some of them are tossing <laughs> dice to them. <laughs> <laughs> Here, take these dice. That's the euphemism, toss my dice. Um, okay, so <laughs> Toss my dice, love. Eyeing a slender female crouched alone at, an, at a nearby bench, Grigner advanced, wishing to wholesomely occupy his time. The flickering torches cast weird shafts of luminescent dancing over the half-naked harlot of his choice. <laughs> <laughs> Her stringy orchid twines of hair... <laughs> 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 Why did he pick? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a, of a description is that? <laughs> Her stringy orchid twines of hair swaying gracefully over the lithe, opaque nose. Lithe. Lithe. That's that actually spelt right. Just uh, sort of, sort of like s strong and slender, like you know, you'd say a panther is lithe or something. Right. Okay. You know, but it's like smooth. As she raised a half-drained mug to her pale red lips. Pale red lips. Okay, got, got it. Pale and red. Pink? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Glancing upward, the alluring complexion noted the stalwart giant as he rapidly approached. What does that mean? The alluring, the alluring complexion. complexion noted the stalwart giant. I guess she's just a face. She's just, she's just a reaction now. Like, yeah. An alluring <laughs> complexion noted the stalwart giant as he rapidly approached. A faint glimmer sparked from the pair of deep blue ovals of the um, amorous female as she motioned towards Grigner, enticing him to join her. The barbarian seated himself upon a stool at the wench's side, exposing his body. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how you, this is how you find out if a prostitute's willing or not. <laughs> Naked, save for a loincloth, brandishing a long steel broadsword. <laughs> An iron spiral battle helmet and a thick leather sandals to her unobstructed unobst view. <laughs> a so, single thick leather sandals. So, not that naked. <laughs> What's going on? How did he? So presumably, when he went into this inn, he was fully clothed. <laughs> I hope. No. <laughs> or he was just like up for it that night. He was like, "I'm gonna make. I mean, I'm gonna turn up." You know, like. I don't know if this is based on any of the text already, but I was imagining that he had, like, a sort of, like, cloak on. Yeah, because it, it like... says that he arrives at Gorzon, and he descends down a dismal alley, puts his horse up, and goes into a tavern. So you'd like to think he's fully clothed at this point. Well, but he's a barbarian, Louis. Being being in a loincloth counts as overdressed. <laughs> so how is he naked at all? What, I mean, what's the description you... of naked, save, save for all of his clothes? Well, it's not many clothes, like a little scrap of fabric covering his penis and sandals and a, and a helmet. I mean, most of him is not covered yeah, by clothes. Yeah, we know what's Let's covering his helmet, but that was terrible. Um, <laughs> and a thick leather sandals to her obstructed, unobstructed view. 
I mean, so yeah, like, I was imagining that he has, like, a big travelling cloak on around him, and then he was like, wench, look upon this, and opens it to unveil his naked save from loincloth self. (laughs) But again, I'm not sure if that's actually what happened. (laughs) So then he goes, thou hast need to occupy your time, barbarian, questioned the female. Only if something worth offering is within my reach, stated Grigner, as his hands crept to the embrace of the tempting female who welcomed them with open willingness. That's not quite what mine says. Mine said, as his hands crept to embrace the tempting female. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're reading the same copy, so yeah. this isn't like the way <laughs> the stars fall. <laughs> yeah, this, this should be consistent. <laughs> yeah. Um, From where do you come, barbarian? And by what are you called? Gasped the complying wench. As <laughs> <laughs> Gasped. <laughs> as Grigner smothered her lips with the blazing touch of his flaming mouth. Nice. It's going to be hard for him to tell her like that. Yeah. (laughs) The engrossed Titan (laughs) ignored the queries of the inquisitive female, pulling her towards him and crushing her... (laughs) 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 Pulling her towards him and crushing her sagging nipples to his yearning chest. (laughs) <laughs> Does that do anything for you, Louis? Like, I, I like to imagine. I like to imagine that it's just her nipples which are sagging. <laughs> yeah. The, otherwise, the pertest breast you've ever seen. But those nipples, like the nipples of a sixty-year-old, they're like fucking cocktail sausages. <laughs> Brilliant. <sighs> Hanging like string. Without struggle, she gave in, winding her soft arms around the harshly brought bronzed hide of Grigner corded shoulder blades okay that was terrible winding her soft arms around the harshly bronze hide of Grigner cord- corded shoulder blades I mean it's pretty terrible anyway Yeah, I, I can't hold that against is, you <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's that's what it is that sentence I can't do better than that As I, his... yeah, I think I think I know what that's meant to be saying I think it's meant to be saying winding her soft arms around the harshly bronzed hide of Grigner of Grig Ner's corded shoulder blades. Right. I uh, think that's what he's trying to say. <laughs> as his callous hands caressed her firmed protruding busts. Busts. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that's different. <laughs> so we're, we've just got confirmation now that they're firm and yeah. protruding and yet sagging nipples. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's got a type. Uh, we can't hold it against her. Okay, this bit's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you you make love well, wench, <laughs> admitted Grigner, as he reached for the vessel of potent wine his charge had been quaffing. Yes. 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 <laughs> More quaffing, please, in books. Yeah. Is that making love? <laughs> I. It's not the definition I would have used. <laughs> but she makes love well. Yeah, that's, that's good to know. I like that he admitted it, like, you know... He, like you know, he's a little bit sort of like sheepish and just like you, you, you make love well. I thought you'd be. I didn't think you knew how to make love, but you, you let me kiss you and you crush su- your sagging you nipples me, well. Yeah. <laughs> well done, wench. Pass me the wine to quaff. <laughs> a flying foot. A flying foot caught the mug Grigner had taken hold of, sending his its blood red contents sloshing over a flickering crescent leashing tongues of bright orange flame to the foot-trodden floor. Okay? I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> Remove yourself, Syrah. The, the wench belongs to me, blabbered a drunken soldier, too far consumed by the influences of his vile brew to take Virile. No- virile brew. Virile brew. <laughs> to take note of Even the superior... Even better. <laughs> yeah. Virile brew to take note of the superior size of his adversary. Grigner lithely, lively, lively, lively. Grigner lively bounded from the startled female. His face lit up to an ashen red ferocity, and eyes locked in a searing feral blaze towards the swaying soldier. I like his face lit up. He's so excited. Yeah. <laughs> Presumably still naked here. When is he ever not? <laughs> yeah. To hell with you, braggard, bellowed the angered accordion. <laughs> what? 
as he that's, hefted that, his... That's his race. <laughs> right. Not an accordion, by the way. An accordion with an E. Yeah. He's got the instrument. I, I wonder why that was chosen as a name for a barbarian tribe or race or whatever. <laughs> uh, bellowed the angered accordion as he hefted his finely honed broadsword. The staggering soldier clumsily reached towards the pommel of his dangling sword, but before his hand ever touched the oaken hilt of a silvered, f- yeah, a silvered flash was slicing the heavy air. The fuse of the savage's lashing right arm bulged from the glistening bronzed hide as his blade bit deeply into the soldier's neck, lopping off the confused head of his senseless tormentor. With a nauseating thud, the severed oval toppled to the floor as the segregated torso of Grigna's bovine antagonist... (laughs) Amazing. (laughs) As the segregated torso of Grigna's bovine antagonist swayed, then collapsed in a pool of swirled crimson. I think we've had about six different metaphors for blood. So yeah, far. he 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 likes mixing up how he describes it. He really does. We might have to pick our favourite at the end. Yeah, might have to have a little post mortem when we're done. Top five blood metaphors. <laughs> Top five dismals. <laughs> In the confusion, the soldiers' fellows confronted Grigner with un- unsheathed cutlasses, directed towards the latter's scowling makeup. The s- the slut should have picked his quarry more carefully," roared the victor in a mocking baritone growl as he swiped his dripping blade on the prostrate form and returned it to its scabbard. Wait, so he was calling that man a slut? Uh, I think what he's saying is that the whore, or the wench, or the slut should have not not been friends with this guy? I don't know. Yeah, why? maybe he's calling... The slut should have picked his quarry more carefully. Hmm. Hmm. I suppose he is calling him a slut. Slut shaming. What a slut. <laughs> yeah. Absolute bovine slut. <laughs> bovine. <laughs> I'm not sure what he was going for there. <laughs> <laughs> this like predates Monkey Island, so not even that. <laughs> nice reference, bro. Um... The fool should have shown more prudence. However, you shall rue your actions while rotting in the pits, stated one of the sprawled soldier's comrades. Grigna's hand began to remove his blade from its leather housing, but retarded the motion in face of the blades waving before his face. (laughs) He probably shouldn't have put his sword back. For some reason, this bit's in, like, indented. Yeah, I'm not Uh, sure what's up with that. So, it must be important. Dismiss your hand from the hilt, barbarian, or you shall find a foot of steel sheathed in your gizzard. Who talks like that? Who says dismiss your hand from the hilt? (laughs) I don't know, but I like it. Yeah. You knew what he meant. I I guess I did. (laughs) Grigno weighed his position, observing his plight, whereupon he took the soldier's advice as the only logical choice. To attempt to hack his way from his present predicament could only warrant certain death. He was of no mind to bring upon his own demise if an alternate path presented itself. The will to necessitate his life forced him to yield to the superior forces, to the superior force, in hopes of a moment of carelessness later upon the part of his captors, in which he could effect a more plausible means of escape. Again, this bit is indented. indented. Yep. You, you may steady your arms. I will go without a struggle. Your decision is a wise one. Yet perhaps you would have been better off had you forced death. The soldier's mouth wrinkled to a sadistic grin of knowing mirth (laughs) as he prodded his prisoner on with his sword point. That's such a long-winded smile sentence. Uh, What happened to the good old days of smirks? Take me back. (laughs) Uh, I, I can't deal with this. No yeah. mouths wrinkling to sadistic grins of oh. knowing mer. Oh dear, that's a good one. Uh, and this is where I'm taking over, isn't it? Yes. After an indiscriminate period of marching through the slinking alleyways and dim moonlighted streets, the procession confronted a massive seraglio. 
The palace area was surrounded by an iron grating with a lush garden upon all sides. I'm looking up seraglio. It is a real word. Do you know what it means? Uh, <laughs> it's so specific. <laughs> the woman's apartments in an Ottoman palace. Huh. That was... I, I think I would have talked longer and before getting to the point, but that's broadly what I thought it was. <laughs> nice. 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 So that gives us an idea of where this is. Yeah. Good sense of place. <laughs> Good. Indiscriminate period of marching. <laughs> uh, the palace area was surrounded by an iron grating, with a with a lush garden upon all sides. The group was admitted through the gilded gateway, and Grigna was led along, one word, a stone pathway bordered by a plush vegetation lustfully enhanced by the moon's shimmering rays. Upon reaching the palace, the group was granted entrance, and after several minutes of explanation, led through several winding corridors to, to a richly draped chamber. Confronting the group was a short, stocky man seated upon a golden throne. Tapestries of richly draped regal blue silk covered all walls of the chamber, while the steps leading to the throne were plated with sparkling white ivory. The man upon the throne had a naked wench seated at each of his arms, and a trusted adviser seated in the back of him. <laughs> <laughs> I like to imagine they I like to imagine they're sat on the same throne, and he's just like he's sitting on his lap. And you walk in, and you can only see one guy, and then suddenly the other guy's like, "Hello." Like <laughs> <Peter Trevor back. laughs> I'm his trusted adviser, and I'm in his back. <laughs> Uh, I've always imagined like these guys could get like pretty hedonistic. Do you reckon he's like actually in him right now? I mean, these guys could be pretty crazy. This trusted advisor party up back, <laughs> naked wenches party out front. Yep. This is party central right here. <laughs> what a time to be a throne king, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's always pretty good being king, but this guy, this guy knows how to party. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> At each Cornware of the chamber, a guard stood at attention, with upraised pikes supported in their hands. Golden chain mail. Gold wouldn't make very good chain mail at all. This guy is like very like form beyond function here. Like maybe gold plated would be alright, but go into more full. detail. Gold's a very soft metal. You don't really want to make any kind of armor or weaponry out of it because it doesn't hold a good edge and it just kind of squishes. You know, if you had, like, some uh, a gold plate, like, protecting your arm and a sword hit it, I mean, it'd be better than not having it there, but it'd still just, like, squish and, like, fuck up your arm. Yeah, but is there anything to be said for swag? I mean, you can't, you can't put a price on swag, even if it is your guards getting fucked up, like, immediately. It's like, but God, they look good. <laughs> I am so pimping here. With my two bitches up front naked and my and my best bro round back. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, look at look at this guy and what a position he's in at life. I'm clearly in no position to you know like judge his choices because son's got it made. <laughs> oh gee, where the hell even was I? Uh, golden chainmail. Yeah, golden chainmail adorning their torsos and barred helmets emitting scarlet plumes enshrouded their heads. The man rose from his throne to the dais surrounding it. His plush turquoise robe dangled loosely from his chunky frame. <laughs> <laughs> the soldiers surrounding Grigna fell to their knees with heads bowed to the stone masonry of the floor in fearful dignity to their sovereign leech. <laughs> Why is there a comma there, Sovereign Liege? Yeah, I don't know, actually. I, I didn't get that in the in the reading at all. They're Sovereign Liege. Maybe it's the book showing due diligence to the king. Mm. <laughs> you know, it can't even, like, narrate about him without showing him his due. Liege? Yeah, it seems like... This seems like a good opportunity for Grigna to escape with all the soldiers in the room, like, prostrated on the ground. He didn't even mention that they took his sword off of him. Though I'm assuming they did. <laughs> Explain the purpose of this intrusion upon my chateau. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly a chateau. <laughs> Why is he calling it that? This is a Gaglio. <laughs> Your serenity. 
Nice. Resplendent in noble grandeur, we have bought this yokel <laughs> for yokel. you. <laughs> Where is this? <laughs> Where in time and space is this? Yokel. <laughs> no, the, <laughs> the soldier gestured towards Krigner for the redress of your all-knowing wisdom in judgment regarding his fate. Also, since this was weirdly indented too. Mm -hmm. I mean... I know, maybe we shouldn't make too much of that. That might have been the fault of the person setting up the website all, we're it, reading it this happens, from. Yeah, and it seems to happen to indicate someone else is speaking. Mm. But yeah, we it might just be this website. Yeah, it's, it's curious. Down on your knees, lout, and pay proper homage to your sovereign, commanded the pudgy noble of Grigner. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> So, so I think it's saying it's it's commanding it of him from the pudgy noble, but yeah, but that's so horribly written mm -hmm. <laughs> by the surly beard of Murif. Murif, Grigner deals to no man. Scowled the massive barbarian. <laughs> by the surly beard of Murif. <laughs> I want to have that on a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> like below, like an image of an angry beard. <laughs> Surly beard. And that name is... I think is... that's the contender for the title so far. Yeah. <laughs> and that that name is M-R-I-F-K. Murf. I, I don't even know how to pronounce that. I think we're as close as we could hope to get, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> Anyway, come on. You dare to deal this blasphemous act to me? You are indeed brave, stranger, yet your valour smacks of foolishness. I find you to be the only fool, sitting upon your pompous throne, enhancing the rolling flabs of your belly in the midst of your elaborate luxury and... One word. Fucking hell, this guy's really going for it. He's like the yeah. king. <laughs> or something. Something. The soldier standing at Grigner's side smote him heavily in the face with the flat of his sword, cutting short the harsh words and knocking his battered helmet to the masonry with an echoing clang. The paunchy noble, sagging round face flushed suddenly pale, then pastily lit up <laughs> the lustrous cherry red radiance. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, is this guy a chameleon? He's all about the place. <laughs> His lips trembled with malicious rage while emitting a muffled sibilant gibberish. What? <laughs> What's going on? Uh. <laughs> his, this is... his sagging flabs rolled like a tub of upset jelly <laughs> and compressed as he sucked in his gut in an attempt to conceal his softness. Uh. <laughs> I'm just... I'm picturing Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> what is... <laughs> what? What is happening? <laughs> why is he like... Why is he so triggered? He's like a king. The guy that just said this to him just got smacked in the face with a sword. Yet he's like freaking out. <laughs> what is... Just muffled, sibilant gibberish. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, we find out what he is. The prince regained his stature. Or statue. The prince regained his statue. So he, so he walked down to the bottom of the throne where Grignor had taken his statue, took it off him, went back up to the top. This is mine. <laughs> My statue. Statue regained. <clears throat> then spoke to the soldiers surrounding Grignor, his face conforming to an ugly expression of sadistic humour. Take this uncouth heathen to the vault of misery, and be sure that his agonies are long and drawn out before death can release him. As you wish, sire, your command shall be heeded immediately, answered the soldier on the right of Grigner, as he star as he stared into the barbarian's seemingly unaffected face. The advisor seated in the back of the noble still <laughs> seated in the back. <laughs> so, so even I when like he got imagine, up. I like to imagine she just stood up with him. <laughs> yeah. Oh well it says here slowly rose. Aww. I got I got too excited. 
The advisor, seated in the back of the noble, slowly rose and advanced to the side of his master, motioning the wenches seated at his sides to remove themselves. He lowered his head and whispered to the noble, Eminence, the punishment you have decreed will cause much misery to this scum, yet it will last only a short time. Then release him to the land beyond the sufferings of the human body. Why not mellow him in one of the subterranean <laughs> vaults for a few days, then send him to life labour in one of your buried mines? To one such as he, a life spent in the confinement of the Stygian pits will be infinitely more appropriate and lasting torture. This guy's like slimy. This is like that that evil kind of vizier kind of figure mm-hmm. whispering that evil into our <laughs> into our fat jabber the prince <laughs> the noble cupped his drooping double <laughs> the noble cupped his drooping double chin in the folds of his brimming palm <laughs> mediating for a moment upon the rationality of the councillor's words, then raised his shaggy brown eyebrows and turned towards the advisor, eyes aglow. Oh, God, more fucking word salad. As always, Agafind, you speak with great wisdom. What's going on with these names? Great. They've all got... They're basically one, vowel, one vowel and then a, just one. a like, fist... He's just, like, palmed his keyboard. Well, there wouldn't have been a keyboard back then, but... Yeah, his typewriter. <laughs> God, could you imagine that? This picture little 16-year-old Jim Theus tapping this away. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like, it's like you know, he, he grabs a load of the keys, fires, p- puts them into a shotgun, <laughs> grabs one vowel, drops that in there too, and then just fires it at a wall. That's his name. Agafind. <laughs> I'll just, I'll, I'll just start that whole part again. As always, Agafind, you speak with great wisdom. Your words ring of great knowledge concerning the nature of one such as he, saith the king. I thought he was a prince. Fucking hell. Mm. Like, no time at o- ago at all. Consistency, Jesus. Yeah, it's a recurring theme with uh, these <laughs> books. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a recurring theme of bad authors not being able to be consistent. I mean, I suppose it shouldn't be a surprise. <laughs> <clears throat> but the noble turned towards the prisoner with a noticeable shimmer reflecting in his frog-like eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but if you're fat, your eyes are not fat. Like, that's not something that gets fat. <laughs> yeah, and even then, frogs don't have yeah. fat eyes. What does that even mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> Explain. <laughs> God, I, wanna, I want someone to draw this guy. <laughs> yes. That's... That sounds amazing. He sounds like a he sounds like some weird freak chimera, not a human. <laughs> the noble turned towards the prisoner with a noticeable shimmer reflecting in his frog-like eyes and his lips contorting to a greasy grin. I have decided to void my previous decree. The prisoner shall be removed to one of the palace's underground vaults. There he shall stay until I have decided that he has sufficiently simmered. Whereupon he is to be allowed to spend the remainder of his days at labour in one of my mines. Upon hearing this, Grigna realised that his fate would be far less merciful than death to one such as he, who is used to roaming the countryside at will. A life of confinement would be more than his body and mind could stand up to. This type of life would be immeasurably worse than death. I shall never understand the ways, if your twisted civilization. I simply defend my honour and am condemned to life confinement by a pig who sits on his royal ass wooing horse and knows nothing of the affairs of the land he imagines to rule. Lectures Greek in a question mark. <laughs> what? I'm, so one thing is I'm quite confused by like the use of language in this, like... It's obviously very yes. medieval y type fantasy language. And then mm-hmm. suddenly it's like royal ass wooing whores and uh there was another bit earlier on where it said that he his like he like smacked of attitude or something like that. Mm. Um <clears throat> and yeah, then lectures Grigner <laughs> like speaking in the third person. <laughs> yeah, I I'm guessing that isn't intentional. <laughs> it feels like it can't have been. 
because he definitely is lecturing. <laughs> it's it's getting very meta now that the <laughs> that the uh, narrator is now not sure what Grigner's doing. It's like, is he lecturing? Uh, <laughs> royal ass wooing horse. <laughs> That's amazing. Anyway, enough of this. Away with the slut before I lose my control. <laughs> you try to kill me, Jim Thiss. <laughs> she wants some company. Fuck. Uh, away with the slut. Seeing the peril of his position, Grigner searched for an opening. Crushing prudence to the sward. <laughs> Why not to the ground? He's he's in the middle of a Seragaglio's main room. There's no sward. He's in a he's in a palace slash Seragaglio <laughs> slash um, <laughs> chateau. <laughs> yes, especially chateau. This floor's going to be like paved or mosaics. This isn't like some, some like barren wilderness underfoot or anything. <laughs> he was right the last time he used sward. Now he's like way off. <laughs> Okay. Seeing the peril of his position, Grigner searched for an opening, crushing pudent- <laughs> prudent- <laughs> prudence to the sward. He ploughed into the soldier to his left arm, taking hold of his sword. Oh, so they did take it off him. And bounding to the dais, supporting the prince before. <laughs> like, supporting. <laughs> like, it, it's such an effort to hold him up. He's so fat. <laughs> before the startled guards could regain their composure. Agafin leaped Grigna and his sire, but found a sword blade permeating the length of his ribs before he could loose his weapon. It's another case of the guards being horrific in this book. Like, you know, they're, they're just not ready. And he's not exactly been, like, compliant, and he's been quite aggressive, if anything. You'd think that yeah. by this point they would be... You would have thought they would have, like, bound his hands or something. Or at least be on else. edge, based on his... Yeah, like, like, a guy took out a sword to smack him in the face with, from its sheath. So I'm guessing that then, after deciding that he was unruly enough to, like attack with a sword. He then put his sword back back in his scabbard and then just like immediately stopped. Like I don't I don't know why they weren't still forcing Grigner to be like prostrated on the ground or whatever in front of him. But uh my word. Going back to when he called him a slut, I like to imagine that as a what was it, a sixteen year old who wrote this? Yes. I like to imagine that he only knew like certain insults. Yeah. And so he just like used Everyone's a slut. Yeah. <laughs> yep, seem seems likely. <laughs> the, the, I've just read ahead and this is amazing. <laughs> Spoilers Lou. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. <laughs> God, get it together, Peter. We're close. <clears throat> we nearly finished the chapter. The councillor slumped to his knees as Grigner slid his crimson blade from Agafin's ribcage. The fat prince stood undulating in <laughs> insurmountable fear before the edge of the fury manned comet. Fiery manned comet. <laughs> Fiery maned comet. Fuck. <laughs> I'll, I'll just have to say that again. The fat prince stood undulating in insurmountable fear before the edge of the fiery maned comet, his flaps of jellied blubber pulsating to and fro in ripples of flowing terror. <laughs> I, I don't know what we can add to that. <laughs> he hasn't even been he hasn't even been hit yet, and he's like pulsating, rippling, and. He's 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 making all sorts of movements. <laughs> None of them uh, smart. Uh, or dignified. All of them are getting accentuated by the flab. No wonder he's not king if he reacts like this. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't deserve to be king. Should have spent less time on his fat ass wooing halls and more time in the gym. Come on. No, it's Jim that's spending time in him. But up but but up but. Mm. That just want to say is that you clapping or yes? <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> anyway, where were we? Where is your wisdom and power now, your majesty? <laughs> Growled Grigner. <laughs> Alliteration, brilliant. <sighs> I like it. 
the prince went rigid as Grigner discerned him glazing over his shoulder. <laughs> right? He swilived to note the cause of his noble's attention, raised his sword over his head, and prepared to leash a vicious downward cleft, but fell short as the haft of a steel-rimmed pike, steel-rhymed pike, <laughs> clashed against his unguarded skull. Then blackness and solitude, <laughs> silence enshrouding, and ever peaceful reigned supreme. <laughs> Before me, Sirrah! <laughs> Before me as always. Ha, ha, ha. Nobly cackled. <laughs> <laughs> Nobly cackled. <laughs> I, I wonder how much, like, sound peak editing I'm going to have to do of this, of me just screeching like a harpy like into a, this microphone. Of you nobly cackling. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so nobly, but especially cackling. <laughs> But yeah, that, that closes chapter two. Like we said, that was quite a long one. <laughs> so, comments? What happened? Uh, <laughs> what the fuck happened? <laughs> well, what's his face? Grigner got to that town. Yep. Found a wench with uh, drooping nipples. Yep. But firm but breasts. breasts. Yep. yep. Uh, made love to her by pressing himself up against her. And kissing her. Yep. That, and then he was like, that's it. Yep. <laughs> That's me done. How was that Unwillingly for you? admitted she was good at it. Yeah. Started drinking his wine when a, a bovine drunkard knocked it from his hand. <laughs> he cut his head off, as you do. Like, like immediately, yep. defending his honour. <laughs> Some people didn't like that. Yeah, like Grigner was just like happy with himself and thought that that, that was that's, that. Yeah, just... that's all that's going to happen after that. No consequences. Yeah, like not even like expecting this to in, like explode into a bar fight or anything. He's just like, "Yep, that's that's how things go." Wiped his sword on the guy, and sheathed it. Was about to get back to, I suppose, making love to the droopy teated wench again, but then like these other guys that were with him with their swords were like, F "Dude, we're here, and we're all pointing swords at you. You're coming with us." And Grignor was like, "Yeah, you got me back to rights here." I did cut his head off, didn't I? Didn't I? <laughs> yeah. And he realised that as all of these guys already had swords in their hand pointing at him, and he'd, you know, put his away and was about to pick up his wine again, I suppose. Yeah. He was like, yeah, I, I probably shouldn't fight my way out of this one. I'll probably die. Even me, mighty Grigner, with my, with my bronze shoulders and nakedness. <laughs> Suited perfectly for battle. <laughs> uh... Then I suppose he was escorted by these soldiers through to the palace slash Seragaglio slash chateau mm -hmm. that, that this prince slash king was making his home in, sitting on his fat ass wooing halls with Agafind, the counsellor, in in behind him. Uh, and then basically what what the what Grigner did was told to the prince. Prince didn't like that. He was he was, he was a bit angry, basically asked Grigner to apologise and pay homage to him. Instead, Grigner gave him a piece of his mind before being smacked in the face with the flat of a sword. And in quivering fat rage, <laughs> the prince basically summoned him to be chucked in an oubliette to die. Though I don't think he said it in as many words. Uh, but Agafin said that it would be better for him to be... Put uh, put in the dark caverns for a little while to mellow, whatever that means. I'm not sure quite. Uh, hmm. Whatever. And then he w and to and to then be put to work in the mines for the rest of his life. And the prince agreed that'd be good. You know, he likes the idea of causing Grigner more suffering in his life. Grigner agrees that's a fate worse than death for him. So he took a so he stole a sword from the horribly awful guards, and rushed the dais. He killed Agafind, or, well, I say killed him, he ran him through, which, it sounded bad. And as, and as he was standing there, lording it over the quivering prince, slash king, <laughs> king, he got, he got, like, smacked on the back of the head with a pike, because he forgot there were still, like, I forget how many guards, like, six, eight guards in the room. And those were just the ones that escorted him in, let alone the other ones. So, yeah... 
he probably would have done better to have attacked the guards after he took the sword rather than the prince who, let's be honest, sounds like he couldn't fight his way out of a paper bag. But, yeah, and now we're going to find out what happens to Grigna next. I'm guessing what Agafind had planned for him, but we'll see. Indeed. So, wider comments about the chapter. Any Anything else that we picked up on? Um, I'm just enjoying it, to be honest. It's a... Uh... It's, it's amazing. It's absolutely <laughs> mad. It's it's like someone threw a thesaurus <laughs> yes. at a page and just like you know when you're looking at a thesaurus and you're like a lot of the words you're like, Yep, yeah, that's a good one, yep. Yeah. Then there's always one word where you're like, What the how like that I've never even heard of that word. I love those words. I usually use them and nobody knows what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's like you picked every single one of those words. And put them mm-hmm. in. I think what that what you started this off with that description of um, what was his name, Jim? Yeah, Jim. It's perfect. What a little quote I got off of him. Yeah, of he, like, is the yeah. master of picking the wrong words yeah. and putting them a in the wrong place. A malaprop genius, a McGonagall of prose with an eerie gift for choosing the wrong word and then misapplying it. And just for a bit of context, because I didn't know it until I checked it out, McGonagall is a poet from a few hundred years ago that was famous for writing, as they put it on the Wikipedia page, doggerel poetry. (laughs) So awful poetry. He was famous for it. So, yeah. Just another bit of history lesson. Don't say we don't do our bit to teach the young'uns. You probably shouldn't be listening to this if you're young. Get out. I swear a lot. Yeah, my favourite thing, I think, is I quite like the names that are given to people. Mm. I just, I, they've, yeah, I just looking over been it. Amazing so far. <laughs> just looking over it now, I didn't even realise there's one that has absolutely. I oh know it does have a vowel. It starts with a vowel, but there's no vowel in the middle. Agfund, Agfund. I pronounce it Agafind, but why? I don't know. Is there really not another A in it? <laughs> Unless it's spelt wrongly there. Well, I mean, that's also possible. Like at the end, it says. Like yeah, that one's Agfind. Ugh. Oh yeah, Agafand, Agafind says earlier on so i guess it's just spelled wrong yeah i think we have more actually we have i think we have those two so far Mm. so we don't know which one's the misspelling yet i guess i guess if he isn't dead we'll find out and if he is dead we'll just never know (laughs) we'll just have to live in this weird schrodinger's agafind agfind forever like i just grigner's a fucking idiot Mm mm-hmm he seems to have no like uh, regard for what he's doing. No like control. I mean, it seems like that he that that's his like barbarian upbringing, like his little lecture question mark that he gave to the mm. fat prince. Uh, where what was he? Say? What did he say? I mean, to be fair, he's bringing this on himself. Like he did just behead someone for. Not much. He said, uh, I shall never understand the ways of your twisted civilization. I simply yeah. defend my honour and am can and am condemned to life confinement by a pig who sits on his royal ass wooing whores and knows nothing of the affairs of the land he ma- imagines to rule. Lectures, Grigner? Yep. I mean, like, it's clear that Grigner's, like, the weird thing here. He doesn't understand civilization at all, so he thinks all of this is okay. What a slut. But it be... What a slut you are, Grigner. But, yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> Just, he, but he's, despite the fact that he seems efficient at killing people, he also doesn't seem to have that much awareness. Like, did he forget about all of those guards when he went up to stab Agafind and threaten the prince? Like, he was just like standing there, just like, "Where's your wisdom and power now?" Like, he was, he was, in, he was taken here into the room with all these guards. They were standing around him. One of them hit him with a sword like thirty seconds ago. <laughs> How did he not see them attacking him? Did he think they're all just going to stand there as he ran towards the dais? I don't think he thinks, like, five seconds ahead of what he's doing. I don't know if he thinks. It just seems to be a case where, so far, everyone seems to be a fucking idiot. <laughs> I just... I should stop doing this. I just skipped forward. Stop doing that! <laughs> and I just saw the word slut again. <laughs> In the like, the completely wrong context. 
Oh man. We should have uh, slot vision. If anyone's been following our previous series coverage, yeah, you'll know of a s- segment called Chuckle Vision. Yeah, where where we count the repetitions of the words chuckled and smirked, just uh, <laughs> that come up in the book. Been, been going through a bit of a dry patch, still getting a couple, but there were quite a chuckle density earlier on in the book, and we're hoping it'll pick up again. But yeah, there's a lot of sluts in this book. I wonder. I wonder if we should start up Slut Watch. <laughs> uh, but now, you see, the problem with this book is that it doesn't re- have a plot, really. At least, like, you know, there's no big... That hasn't stopped us before. <laughs> no, no, no. It's... I-, I won't have that said about the way the stars fall. It definitely has a plot. There's, there's a lot to talk about, about the ramifications of how things interact with each other. But this is just vi- is just <laughs> making love in, inver- in inverted commas, <laughs> violence and insults, basically, just strung together with dismal alleyways. Like there's there's like no wider context of any of this to talk about. We don't have any, you know. I don't even know what we can speculate about the world. You know, they don't even give us like enough of a grain to speculate about something. What do we know about the Norgolian Empire? Nothing. We have the phrase the Norgolian Empire. What else is what else about it? Nothing. We know they have a fat prince. We don't even know if he's a prince of the Norgolian Empire. Maybe he crossed out of that on his way towards uh, what's it called, uh, Gorzom, that he's in now. Maybe Gorzom isn't part of the Argolian Empire. Maybe it. Maybe Kryn was the borderline. We don't know. But thankfully, this book is so amazing that you know it speaks for itself. You know, there's plenty of stuff just happening in the moment. To, there's half of the time, but we've talked about it a bit. I'm not even sure how much there even is to discuss other than just look at this madness. Look at it. <laughs> look at what's happening. <laughs> Who wrote this? <laughs> uh, I, you know, you can kind of understand why people are questioning if it's an intentional satire. Mm-hmm. Because it, it is so perfectly awful. <laughs> but yeah, I'm... Not sure if I really have that much to say about Chapter 2, really. Like I say, uh, res ipsa loquita, the thing very much speaks for itself. Indeed. So, I mean, I'm... I reckon that's probably about enough. This has gone on for over an hour now. We'll probably... So, I imagine if this is anything to go by, this will probably be spit into about three parts for the Eye of Argon, if this is at all indicative. Three or four. We'll have to see. Don't know how long some of the later chapters are. Chapter one was bloody tiny. So, don't worry. As we said, we'll be back to the way the stars fall before you all know it. But next week, we'll be back with more amazing... (laughs) Amazing bovine opponents and rippling fat princes. (laughs) As we prepare to stare back into the Eye of Argon and the awful prose of Jim Theus. See you next week. See ya. Bye.